again. This is the second in a two-part series about constant acceleration. In the first video, I talked a little bit about how to calculate the time required to accelerate to escape velocity from Earth. But I told you I didn't quite tell you the whole story. Well, here's the rest of the story. We all know the Earth is round. That's pretty round, I guess. Let's say we look at the Earth from the North Pole. So this is the North Pole looking south. The Earth's turning, right? The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So the Earth is turning, I guess, counterclockwise when viewed from the North Pole. Okay, that means if I'm standing here on Earth somewhere, and I'm not out here at the equator, I'm up about there maybe, I'm moving. I'm moving because the Earth's turning around. Well, why don't I feel like I'm moving? Why isn't there air blowing past me? Well, it's because the air is moving with the Earth. All right. Well, how fast am I moving? Let's, let's say you, you started right out here at the equator. How fast would I be moving if I was standing at the equator? Not moving with respect to the Earth, but moving with respect to the rest of the universe, I guess. Well, velocity is distance over time, distance per unit time. Well, that's going to be, I'm going to move one Earth circumference per day. Okay, and I'll call that a circumference per day. Well, how much is a circumference? How much is the circumference of the Earth? Well, you know, as you might guess, we know the uh, uh, diameter of the Earth really, really accurately. Now, I wouldn't normally work to this many significant figures, but this, measure, this number's been measured very accurately, so it's probably worth using here. Well, pi, circumference is pi times the diameter. So I'm going to say pi times the diameter is 12,756.2 kilometers. Now, I know the Earth isn't exactly round. I'm not quite sure where that number comes from. But it's almost exactly round, so we'll use this number. And one day, there's 24 hours. Okay, so these aren't the units I want. I don't want kilometers per hour. I, well, I could use kilometers per hour. Let's say I want to use meters per second. Well, there's a thousand kilometers and or a thousand meters in a kilometer and 3,600 seconds in an hour, and that works out to let's see, 463.9 meters per second. Well, is that a lot or a little? Well, look at this way. The speed of sound at sea level is around 340 meters per second. So that's more than Mach 1. Now, I don't feel Mach 1 air blowing past me because the, the air on the Earth is moving along with the surface of the Earth. Right? But that's still an appreciable speed. Okay? And it's, you can't ignore that when you're trying to launch a rocket. Okay, so let's try this. The escape velocity from the Earth's surface is 11,200 meters per second. So if I can get an object moving, 11,200 meters per second with respect to the surface of the Earth, or with respect to the center of gravity of the Earth, I suppose, um, the object is going to leave Earth's gravity forever, never come back. Okay, So if we want to send a space probe to the stars or some distant planet, that's the minimum. That's, it has to be going at least that fast. Now, more than that would be great. So if we look at constant acceleration, V final is V initial plus the rate of acceleration times time. All right? Now we said in the last problem my acceleration is going to be 3 g's and that's 29.42 meters per second squared I believe. Yes? Okay. And uh, so 3 g's is a pretty comfortable acceleration. Just about anybody could withstand that if they're strapped in and supported appropriately. All right, so let's see how, what, what the time's going to be. I know final velocity, that's escape velocity. Initial's now going to be this instead of zero. Okay, and that means I'd be launching, say, off this direction. I'd be launching tangent to the surface of the Earth. I got to launch a, watch a space shuttle launch one time back when they were doing that sort of thing. And although it comes off the pad and vertical, it goes horizontal fairly quickly. Right? So it really does come off pretty much tangent to the Earth. Now, it was obviously going into orbit, so it was just going to keep going around. Had it been going fast enough, it could have just kept right on going. The shuttle can't do that, though. So I'm going to, anyway, I'm going to solve this for t. So time is going to be v final minus v0 over a. So that's 11,200 meters per second minus uh, 463.9 meters per second all over my rate of acceleration, which is... 29.42 meters per second squared. So meters per second divided by meters per second squared is going to give me seconds. Units are going to work out. And that works out to be 364.9 
seconds. Oops, try that again. Seconds. About six minutes. Okay? That's less than it was before by a little bit. Okay. Now you think, well, 463 meters per second. Is that really that much to worry about? Yes, it is. The fuel burn rate in rockets is measured in tons per second. Okay? Rockets drink fuel really fast, particularly the great big rockets you would use to send a space probe away from the Earth out to this, the planets. Okay? These are very big rockets and they drink a lot of fuel. So anytime you can get some free velocity, and velocity means all that fuel you don't have to carry, that's payload you can carry. And so that's why rockets are almost always launched towards the east. But another thing, it only matters if you're, you know, this calculation is only right. If I'm at the equator, I assume that my distance from the axis of rotation of the Earth was half the diameter of the Earth. Well, is that really true? It is true if you're launching right from the equator. Well, go look at where the launch complexes are around the world. The one in the United States is at the, on the uh, coast of Florida. It's at about 28 and a half degrees north, I think. So it's not exactly at the equator, but it's close, okay? The, the one that Ariane uses is in French Guiana, which is like two degrees off the equator. So it really is getting every bit of this, okay? The worst place to try to launch a rocket would be right from the North Pole. It's twisting that way, but you're not getting that free velocity. Plus, it's pretty hard to get to. So there you go. This is why rockets are launched towards the east, west to east, and um, why it's really good to have a launch facility close to the uh, equator. Hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.